Welcome, friends, to a session on uh, the art of storytelling. As uh, all of us know, storytelling is so important. Our stories are so important that they are a part of our uh, uh, lives, and that's almost a cliche to say. I mean, every day, every moment, either we are listening to stories, or we are making up stories in our head, or we are watching stories even in our sleep. So this is something that is so much a part of our life that we don't even realize the. Uh, art behind the storytelling itself and also the uh, uh, science behind storytelling and uh, uh, the plot structure and other things are known to a lot of us but it's important to uh, see the possibilities that that storytelling has so uh, before i begin the presentation i will just uh, uh, cite the sources that i have uh, uh, gone through for uh, preparing this presentation and uh, these are just uh, some of them this is a wonderful book called the storytelling animal by uh, Jonathan Gorskal, there's uh, Resonate by Nancy Duarte, there's this book uh, uh, Wired for Story by Lisa Cron, and Made to Stick by uh, Chip and Dan Heath. So these are just some of the references that I'll be talking about as I go along in the presentation. Uh, this is a very well uh, uh, known saying, and we uh, keep on hearing about uh, this thing very often, that if we want a message to burrow into a human mind, work it into a story if it is just mere facts then probably it will not uh, stick into human mind or we might not even realize the implications of it or the importance of it or what the message actually is so when we uh, want to put across a point very strongly we'll see that it has to be worked into a story just mere narration of facts or just mere reporting of facts is often not enough and that is why it's important for all of us to know how to uh, create stories out of information or how to know how stories work and uh, to to be frank this is something that we watch on a very daily basis on television on news on, on to sporting events on to every other kind of a thing we find out uh, lots and lots of these stories we'll find out uh, how these stories work and what are the important elements of it but first of all the re realization that if the message has to make an impact it has to be worked into a story and uh, stories generally answer some overarching question where generally when it is designed from one end to the other end we are uh, act instinctively looking every line through every character through every image who's taking us closer to the answer there is an answer that we are looking for and we want to find out what is that answer or or whether we are looking for that resolution or not so generally there is one overarching question there might be other sub, uh, sub questions etc but there is an uh, overall question that everybody seeks an answer to or as readers or as listeners we are waiting for for an answer to those uh, stories uh just let me give you some very small examples i'm not uh, even going down into the details and i can have hundreds of uh, images about all that even in sporting events whether it's boxing or whether it it, it, it is professional wrestling or it's cricket or, uh, or 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 football or basketball or any other kind of a sport we are always moved by the stories there and i'm sure uh, very recently you would have uh, been hearing a lot of stories about mohammed siraj the uh, fast bowler who has just joined the indian cricket team and and the the fantastic story about you know how he came up from very very poor background and uh, how he has uh, managed to uh, uh, turn himself into into a world class bowler so when we are talking about uh, these even sporting events more than the action at times these stories are what uh, makes them so very relevant and so very moving and we are uh, attracted to these kind of uh, things as well i'm sure you must you would have remembered uh, uh, the last year's winner of of indian idol uh, his, his name was uh, sunny hindustani and the uh, apart from the fact that he was such a fabulous singer uh, singing in nusrat fateh ali khan's voice uh, and with all the uh, uh, clarity and with all the expertise that you uh, expect from from uh, an indian idol but the fabulous story behind the person how he rose up from 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 a, a shoe shine boy to where where, where he was and that is uh, something that is moving that is something that uh, keeps us uh, watching these programs apart from the uh, wonderful uh, talent that these people have the stories behind these people are so very important even on the uh, konbanega crorepati uh, kind of a show you would see that it's not only about the quiz show it's not only about uh, mr bachchan and, and and the questions and the answers but the individuals who come there and there's always a story behind those individuals and these are the things that uh, matter i mean if, if you've seen that uh, maybe the earlier ones which we would see there were the stories which were told by the people themselves on the seat 
but now all these people's stories are said by by uh, you know a camera which has done the work even before that person has come on to this uh, hot seat even in courts we've seen the wonderful lawyers the lawyers who do very well are the ones who can spin a very good story a believable story a credible story we'll find out the elements of the stories in in today's uh, presentation but very important to realize and understand that these are the stories that keeps us uh, uh, hooked on to uh, these events apart from of course the uh, fabulous uh, 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 you know talent that these people display even in this test victory today the story is so very important about uh, a team which was absolutely in, in the doldrums you know having the lowest ever score ever scored by any team in the history of indian cricket any indian team in the history of uh, of cricket so from there bouncing back so these are the stories that we remember apart from uh, the fabulous victories and and uh, why are uh, we fixated on on such kind of stories one of the things we'll see that many of these stories are on trouble they are fixated on some trouble that uh, some some people had to face through even whether it was mohammed siraj's uh, story about a troubled uh, 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 you know poverty stricken uh, uh, childhood or whether it was about uh, indian team being in trouble the last time or whatever so it's not only story is not only about escaping from from these uh, uh, troubles if if it was so then it would all be like you know those hunky dory rajeshri kind of you know song and dance kind of a things but that is not the only pattern we find in uh, stories so uh, stories are not only about uh, escapism or escaping from uh, uh, you know real life troubles but there are very many other things uh, in in a very uh, in a good story that we must uh, uh, realize uh there were times when uh, people have even and we know about the plot and i will talk about the plot that we uh, so very well know that there is a crisis and a resolution so on and so forth but there were people who have tried to break away uh, from these uh, plots because if you see if uh, and we will uh, present in today's uh, uh, presentation as well that uh, there are uh, 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 some very uh, strong as we would say a universal grammar of story which is uh, almost similar across uh, uh, you know different cultures different genres and and different kinds of uh, storytelling parts so uh, there were people who tried to you know break through these plots and they would just uh, you know come out with what what, what is happening every day uh, you know kind of bringing the boring parts back into story and that did not work so uh, basically story is about removing all the boring parts out and we uh, as journalism uh, uh, students and and teachers and communicators we know that even in journalism we are trying to bring in all the important parts but in in novels or in stories we are trying to leave out we are trying to take out the snip out the boring parts of of uh, real everyday life and uh, bring in the uh, important uh, parts into the story so stories are almost always about people with problems so it 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 could be people or even you know personified animals animals who speak in people's voices so they have a problem they want something badly it could be they want to survive or they want to win the boy or the girl or they want to find a lost child or a lost parent or whatever so it's almost always about people with problems so come to think of it this is a very very simple way of suggesting what a story would be so if i i put that uh, in a in a very simple manner and that's what uh, the the first book that i spoke of uh, speaks of is is that story has a character who faces a predicament and he tries to extricate he or she whenever i talk about he of course i mean she as well he or she tries to extricate himself or herself from the situation so why should we be bothered about that that is the question and that is where we are leading up to so in its at its very simplest a story is about a, a, a human being or uh, you know or any kind of a, 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 even a thing that we can identify with it could be an avatar it could be uh, animals or it could be other uh, uh, or organisms that we identify with they face a predicament and they try to extricate themselves from that kind of a situation if i have to uh, kind of uh, explain that in terms of uh, uh, bollywood then it would be something like that this is the uh, sid fields uh, paradigm I, i'm just trying to uh, zoom that for you so sid field is is a, a you know a very famous uh, hollywood uh, screenplay writer and you know this is uh, his his uh, uh, particular style that he it talks about and i'm just trying to uh, emphasize on that particular thing so the first act is basically a setup 
The second act is what he describes as the confrontation. If you see right at the top, is the confrontation, and the third act is the resolution. And if if you can see that the second act is the larger one, and, and there are so many points in the second half as well. Uh, down at the screen here, uh, uh, as I said, these are in in very uh, you know this is uh, like uh, okay. Let me just zoom in through this. Uh, we are trying to explain it through. Uh, the Shaw Shawshank Redemption, in, in my view, uh, one of the best movies ever made, and uh, it's a personal favorite. I'm sure many of you would have watched that film as well. So uh, Andy, the protagonist, is is convicted and he enters Shawshank. So that is about uh, the setup, uh, and then there is you know some kind of a uh, plot point, and that's where you know that's where you will go into the confrontation part. And in the uh, uh, plot point. Andy asks Red, you know, played by uh, Morgan Freeman. I'm sure you remember uh, that uh, fabulous character. He asks Red for rock hammer, a small rock hammer, you know, which uh, uh, that's where he asks for that, and then then it, you know, story goes off. Uh, then you know the confrontation part is such a big one. Andy forms a relation with uh, 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 Red, and you know he becomes very friendly with Red, and he adapts to prison life. Then there is a midpoint, and finally, you know, you uh, end, uh, you come to the. Uh, uh, you know this uh, place between confrontation and resolution when andy escapes from prison and in the resolution andy and red reunite in mexico i mean uh, and all of us feel so very happy about everything that has happened to everybody so this is what you know basically uh, a hollywood uh, plot structure looks like or that's what uh, many stories look like another way so as i said you know the the one way of story was this one des describing story as a character with a predicament and an attempted extrication and this is another way of looking at the story with a setup and then a confrontation and then finally a resolution many of uh, our everyday stories they can be uh, uh, you know uh, described in this manner and as i said why should we be bothered about whether you know the hero is uh, winning or he is not winning because something is at stake that it convinces us that it will be a big loss if the uh, hero or heroine does uh, don't uh, obtain their goals so important that the audience is convinced that the stake is high that for them the you know freedoms he was uh, in shawshank redemption he was uh, jailed because you know although he was innocent so on and so forth so something that convinces us that uh, this is important that the stakes are high or we we identify with those stakes so uh, then again you know i'll go on to describe three different kinds of plots once again so as i said the first one was about uh, you know this very simple one story means character predicament and ex attempted extrication then this is a well known uh, uh, you know problem and resolution or confrontation setup and resolution and then we are going to talk about three different plots which generally describe most of the stories that we come across so first of uh, these things are known uh, is known as the challenge plot and what is a challenge plot it is a plot where it's it's you know kind of an underdog story where there is a challenge where the protagonist thief overcomes a formidable challenge and he succeeds or she succeeds so lot of our things are about these kind of things so it could be the mountain man it could be so many other people or it could be even the swadesh story of uh, 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 Shah Rukh Khan, or or you know, majority of our stories where there is a challenge and people, uh, you know, fight through those challenges and how they triumph through their willpower, through the through their tenacity, you know, and through 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 all kinds of uh, uh, adversity. So uh, you might have uh, found out, you know, these kind of plots in many of the uh, uh, even even social issues when there is somebody who's who's fighting for maybe uh, some some. environmental rights or whatever so how uh, he or she you know fought the story and how he or she managed to uh, win in the end or these uh, kind of plots are also seen in sporting events uh, uh, a lot of people are talking about you know how how rahane has uh, fought and scored the century since these are very real examples i'm just trying to give you these kind of examples so challenge plot is a very very uh, important plot to understand there then the other plot is about the connectivity plot about uh, people who bridge a gap it could be a racial gap it could be a gap between uh, the 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 rich girl poor boy it could be between classes it could be between religions between ethnicities between different uh, demographies or whatever people who who develop a relationship that bridges these kind of gaps or pe people who uh, cause these connections so uh, come to think of it it can be related to our earlier uh, uh, examples or the templates that i spoke of but uh, we can see this as a very uh, different kind of a plot a plot where uh, 
people who uh, develop relationship that bridges these gaps. So a very important uh, kind of a, a plot structure. The other plot that uh, I'm going to talk about is the creativity plot, which involves some kind of a breakthrough, solving a long-standing puzzle, or it could be attacking a problem in an innovative way. So maybe the Mangal or the Mars kind of a thing that we see in, in Indian movies. Although uh, you can find uh, a lot of these things related to the first part as well, uh, to the to, to the uh, uh, challenge plot as well. But it can be seen in many cases as a uh, uh, different kind of a plot as well, where someone is making a mental breakthrough. You are going through conflict. I will talk about uh, some of these uh, mental conflicts that we go through uh, in real life as well. So this this creativity plot involves that kind of a mental breakthrough. Somebody who can break through his even his maybe his or her earlier thought processes and attacking the problem in a new or an innovative kind of a way. So these are again you know three different plot structures. So. Uh, these are generally, you know, very, very simple ways of describing how plots work. Uh, again, you know, another very, sim uh, you know, uh, important uh, anagram and uh, I'm, I'm trying to suggest uh, the elements of a very uh, good story. So if you can see it, it, it spells as uh, S-U-C-C-E-S, -C -C -E success. First of all, the story structure has to be uh, simple enough. If the story structure is, is, is of, of the inception kind, then... Uh, a lot of those things will be lost and you'll have to spend a lot of cognitive effort and so on and so forth in those story structures. So if you remember, you know, all our old, uh, even religious stories about uh, Lord Ganesha, you know, just uh, making a detour of, of his mother and saying that, OK, I, I, I have uh, uh, covered the entire earth and people believe it. So there are so many, you know, this is so very profound that uh, he was able to explain that, OK, for me, my parents are the world. So if I take a detour of them, I have, you know, taken a detour of the world very simple stories unexpected and this is something that uh, is important if this is cliched if it is boring if it is something that we expect will happen then it is lost so that unexpected or that surprise element is very important in story you expected this but this is what it is and that's uh, again a very important element of a good story whenever we are telling a story whether it's uh, about about sports or it's about social issues or it's about any other issue if we can bring in that element of unexpected that we uh, expect it to be like this but it's actually like this so that's a very important story element the other uh, st important story element is that it must be concrete it must not be abstract it must be about real things it must uh, tell tell us about real problems or it must tell us about real issues or it must be talking about things that matter to everybody so that, again, is uh, very important that uh, th th there must be a concreteness to the story. It must also be credentialed means it must be believable. It must not be in, in the realms of fantasy. And that's why uh, there are many elements through which you can establish uh, uh, credentials. And one of the very simple elements in a story would be to uh, explain things uh, in, in details. And when, when those things are explained in details, people can understand that, okay, this is uh, uh, true or, or or i have evidence to believe that what are, whatever is being said is true emotions are a very 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 important part po point, point, part of a story and you know i cannot overemphasize the importance of emotions or the effective uh, thinking that goes into uh, uh, you know or, or the effective uh, elements that goes into the story that if we are if you don't feel strongly about it then then uh, it means nothing to us. So it could be anger, it could be outrage, it could be happiness, it it, 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 it could be sympathy, it could be lots and lots of emotions. So, uh, so come to think of it, a lot of even political communication these days has uh, these emotions involved there. And uh, uh, as someone great uh, once said that if you don't have emotion, you don't even have reason. So it, it's not uh, emotion oblique reason, it's like a very, very important part of uh, our everyday life when we feel strongly about it or when, when we feel uh, or when, when, when we like something or when we're angry at something, our, our reactions are uh, uh, stronger or, or we uh, remember those things. So only those uh, stories uh, uh, remain in our hearts or those stories are remembered when there is an emotional uh, element involved. There. That is why even in journalism, when we uh, use the human interest angle, the stories are so very popular. People remember those kind of stories and finally the story itself and we have just uh, spoken about you know the importance or the uh, 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 you know the common kinds of uh, plot structures in a story so a good story has to be simple it must bring in the element of the unexpected there must be a, a concreteness in the story it must uh, 
be credentialed in the sense that, uh, uh, that there must be a lot of evidence for what is being said or uh, people regard that being true and uh, emotions are important. And of course, it has to have that story kind of a structure. So why should it be unexpected so that we pay attention, we sit up and take notice. And that's a very important way of uh, make, uh, getting people to uh, pay attention by bringing in, in an element of surprise. So every good story, whether it's, whether it's fiction or non-fiction, or even if it's a news story, if there's an element of surprise, people will pay attention to that. Concrete so that people can understand and relate to that and even remember that because there are so many you know stories going around. There are so many things happening. There are so many things being said that if we uh, do not uh, uh, remember those things, then we are lost. So it must be something that we remember and that that will happen when when the, the story itself is concrete. As I said, credibility because you must be uh, you must believe in it and you must agree. Uh, with with the stakes and those stakes should appeal to you as well emotional it uh, uh, makes you uh, you know care for those kind of events so when 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 uh, we talk of climate change and its and, and its impact for example and if we uh, bring in those emotional elements that will make people a lot more caring about what they do or what they not do or how they react to the stories or how they how they consider the stories as their own and the story itself it uh, prompts us to act and that is why uh, these elements are so very important in, in uh, our our uh, uh, story structure. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details of the left brain and the right brain and all that. But if you see or if you remember all that, you know, left brain is where the intuition, the reason and all that is there. And the right part is where all the creativity is there. So I'm not going to get into a, a lot of details about that. But it's very, very important to understand that our mind abhors or our brain abhors thing that we cannot explain. If there is something that we cannot explain, our brain, our mind, it will start thinking for reasons itself. And uh, that's, that is something that goes on all the time. When, when say, for example, if, if you suddenly uh, uh, hear a dog barking outside, you will immediately you know, spin up a story in your head that maybe somebody is uh, trying to chase a dog or, or trying to throw a stone or maybe somebody is coming or whatever. So these are the things that we keep drawing onto ourselves all the time. If, if uh, suddenly we hear loud music outside, you know, there's a story, okay, maybe there's a marriage party or maybe there is, uh, there are people who are, uh, uh, you know, celebrating New Year's Day or uh, you know, New Year's Eve or whatever. So these are the stories that we tell ourselves all the time. Because, you know, whenever there is something and we can't explain it, our uh, left brain will immediately tell us, okay, this means that. So we are, uh, you know, providing reasons for, uh, uh, you know, ourselves on a daily basis, on a regular basis, on, 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 on an every second basis. Even now, you know, if there are things that we cannot uh, make sense of, we will uh, try and uh, create reasons for that. And there are hundreds and hundreds of uh, examples you know, from behavioral sciences where people talk about, you know, how these uh, uh, brain structures work. Because now there is something known as that fMRI, uh, uh, functional magnetic resonance imaging, where we exactly know which are the neurons that light up when we are thinking about food, for example, or when we are angry and when we are uh, outraged or whatever. So uh, we know how the brain functions. And uh, that's what I'll, I'll try to talk about some of the things that why do we f f find stories appealing or why stories are important in our everyday lives. So there is something known as the mirror neurons in our brain. And whenever we see something on the screen, whenever we, uh, you know, feel angry on the screen, then the same neurons will light up when we are actually angry. Or when we see somebody uh, sad and uh, we feel empathy for those characters. And how do we know that? Because there have been experiments involving fMRI where we have exactly the same neurons in our brain. Uh, uh, brain lighting up when we are actually sad. So when we empathize with somebody whom, whom we identify with, and as we have seen that that character has to be something that we relate with, or that is something that we identify with. And we uh, are with, uh, with, with, with the, uh, the, the predicament he or she is in, and we want him or uh, her to win. And that is why we empathize with those fictional characters. And we literally experience the same feelings ourselves. And that is why stories are so very important. And that is why as journalists also we uh, tell all these stories because then people find them believable. Then the, the, their credibility is established. And that is not because the way the stories are said, but that's the way we are, we are created. That's the way we are. That's the way our biology is. 
that these mirror neurons they exist and they recreate for us whatever we see or whatever we hear or whatever we identify with and that is how we identify with those stories and we actually live through through those stories we find ourselves in those situations we can identify with those situations and that is why they move us so much that is why we find them so very believable and that is why there are many things that happen because uh, uh, we uh, empathize with with uh, such things so as i said it is allergic to randomness and coincidence so if if it cannot find meaning it will try and impose some meaning on something which is happening so it could be as i said it could be any kind of a thing so uh, when whatever uh, is being explained and if you don't believe that you try and make up your own explanation that suddenly the phone has stopped ringing so it could have been like this okay the bell is ringing now so uh, that person would have come or whatever the milk man or the newspaper man or whatever we try and create those stories or maybe the milk man didn't come so this could have happened to him we we try and create those patterns all the time or even in uh, uh, geometric shapes if we don't find patterns and if you see at clouds at times very closely you might find you know that they resemble somebody or, or the other so we are looking for those patterns we are looking to uh, find out meaning as i said and and the left brain is very active in all, all these things so we are as i said allergic to uncertainty and randomness and that is why storytelling gives us uh, that kind of a relief because it it tells us why something is happening and why it is important and how we can make sense of it uh the uh, uh, flip side of that is that very often we end up believing in conspiracy theories i mean there are uh, uh, lots and lots of examples i don't want to get into all the examples but there are examples about uh, uh, i mean uh, almost uh, uh, one third people at times believe in, in, in conspiracy theories and there are many people who, who still believe that okay covid 19 itself could be a, uh, you know uh, is not real or or whatever we see is not real somebody else is you know making us believe all that so people believe in all kinds of conspiracy theories because as i said our brains are tuned like that and they are actively looking for reasons and many people actually believe in those conspiracy theories so you can make people actually believe that it's it's the sun which uh, revolves around the earth and not the other way and the earth is flat so a lot of lots and lots of people have their own uh, theories to believe in and that's why because that's because their brain uh, uh, leads them into believing all these kind of things so uh, it's not only about whether you find it believable or not it also uh, has some very very important uh, elements the story has a very important element because it encourages us to behave ethically because every story in every story virtue is being rewarded if somebody is good he or she gets a reward and the uh, uh, concept of justice or the belief in justice is always established in these kind of stories if something unjust is happening it will be resolved i mean after the confrontation it will be resolved i mean that will be achieved so it it encourages to, uh, us to behave ethically as well as i said you know a lot of those religious stories i mean even even the ganesha story as i uh, told you it, it it encourages us to be very respectful of our parents and uh, what 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 a pro more profound way than to just tell it in a very simple story so that makes us believe in uh, justice for example because uh, uh, if you have something uh, you know which is uh, unjust happening or there is some injustice happening in in a, in a story it could be you know any any film it could be a serial or it could be any kind of a thing it it never you know the storyteller would never uh, you know kind of condone that the storyteller would always condemn that kind of uh, violence so fiction will never be neutral to violence fiction or storytelling is always condemnatory of those violence and we are uh, attached to those stories because we want to see the redemption we want to see justice being done we want to see uh, the person you know uh, uh, coming out victorious after uh, uh, that fight or, or after he goes through uh, that, that that kind of a problem so uh, these are very very important elements of of storytelling because it it tells us you know to behave ethically and you would imagine that these things were there even before the uh, uh, invention of the printing press or 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 uh, you know uh, mass communication because earlier we had all those storytellers and he, he or she would have uh, people surrounding him or her and they would be telling all those stories about about uh, uh justice about about uh, grace about uh, good things and about uh, uh, winners uh, about uh, people who are virtuous winning and people who are not virtuous losing so uh, these are some of the strains that have uh, uh, survived for for generations for for thousands of years 
So uh, if I have to, uh, you know, compare it with maybe a general report, then a general report just conveys information, but stories produce an experience as an audience. We have, as I just spoke about the mirror neurons, we see the, when we when we hear those stories or when we see those stories, we can experience those stories. We can, as I as I just showed you, we identify with the protagonist. The same neurons light up. The the same feeling comes to us when we see that. Uh, story being played out or even when we read it. So uh, that's very important that, uh, uh, you know, stories uh, produce that experience and a good storyteller would create desire in the audience that, okay, I want it to go this way. So, and this is the resolution I want. And then they will adopt our perspective. So it could be something that we can do with uh, climate change, for example, that, you know, through the story, we tell them that this is what should happen. So rather than, you know, directing them or telling them or, or, or you know, just uh, hammering the message again and again, if we can weave it into a story which people identify with, then we'll be able to uh, make them adopt our perspective. So uh, the important thing is that something must be at stake that uh, convinces, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm just repeating what I've uh, said earlier, that it convinces that, they, that a great deal will be lost if the hero doesn't or the heroine doesn't obtain his or her goal. Uh, now I'm just uh, trying to in the next uh, uh, few slides I'm just trying to tell us uh, tell you once again about uh, what what is a good story or what are the elements of a good story and then I will uh, uh, end this uh, presentation after uh, you know a few of these slides. So uh, what are uh, what are the important elements in a story which allows us to envision the future through the story we are uh, uh, kind of tunneling it to the future and we are trying to find out what will happen or what might happen to us so those stories which allows us to look into the future is a very important uh, are uh, important elements of stories and, and as i said that these are the cognitive secrets of our mind uh, this is what uh, uh, behavioral science tells us about how our mind works so this is one part of it that we uh, uh, think in those stories or we are involved in those kind of stories which allows us to see the future, which allows us to uh, be a part of a future. Uh, again, a very, very important part. When the brain focuses its attention on something, it filters out all the unnecessary information. So once you uh, uh, focus onto something, so good fiction writers are one who, ones who will just have the right amount of detail. They will not be explaining the background and, and the place uh, with, with uh, all uh, the, the specifics. So when, when they describe something in specific, maybe the surroundings or whatever, those specifics will be as less as possible so that uh, the, the focus is not lost on the story of the human being there and on the broad theme that the story brings out. So there are two or three things, you know, playing out at the same time. There is the story of that particular human being who's involved in that predicament and he or she is trying to extricate himself or herself out of that predicament and the brain... Uh, uh, and, and we are focused on to that kind of a thing. So all the unnecessary information is what the brain will immediately uh, blank out. So as storytellers, it's important to for us to keep the focus on and not to bring in a lot of all those uh, uh, subplots into the theme. Again, emotion determines the meaning of everything. If we are not feeling something about it, we are not at all conscious. And uh, as, as we work along, we, you, you can understand that if you're working with a team which is truly excited about something, then the result will be there to see. And uh, I mean, every story, even if you are not playing out the emotion, the uh, 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 emotional part has to be established in, an, uh, in another way. Let me explain you how. If all of us, when we talk about Captain Spock, the very moment we think, okay, okay, so the emotion is very important. If the emotion is not there, then the person would be like that. And in that wonderful serial, uh, you know, that wonderful series called The Big Bang Theory, all of us, you know, find uh, uh, Sheldon so very uh, uh, likable because uh, at times his, his emotions are not uh, what it not, uh, normally is. And that's what it, it makes conscious about our own emotions, about how, how emotions should be. So uh, a lot of uh, things we see on Twitter or on Facebook or on Instagram or whatever is because people people are emotionally driven to uh, react to that kind of a, uh, to, to that kind of a thing and it might not always be good but it's important to realize that if we are not feeling then we are not even conscious then uh, the the stories which uh, will become a part of our subconscious will not uh, uh, be very effective. Uh, Everything we do is goal-directed. And again, you know, that's very important. Uh, 
in stories and also in a, a, a real life we are always trying to figure out what is everybody's uh, agenda or what, what what do people want uh, uh, from us do they want to you know just hit us with a hammer or they just want to uh, send us a smiley or they are just you know uh, being friendly or they, they they might do us harm or whatever because uh, most of us are all of us are goal directed we we are you know looking forward to uh, achieve certain things or we have certain things in mind or we want uh, certain things to happen and uh, uh, you know uh, Uh, we are also looking at at people's goals. So if your if your protagonist doesn't have a goal, or if, if your story is about things which which, which uh, there is there is uh, no goal, then that is not a good story. So uh, generally, uh, uh, it's important or good stories will have some kind of a goal. You know, or, however indirect it may be, but these goals are important in in, in storytelling. Again, a very important part, and uh, in in another video on uh, cognitive biases, I've I've uh, spoken out about this as well. We see the world not as it is, but as we believe it to be. And uh, in the conspiracy theories part, also I I I, I told you that the brain itself uh, uh, imagines or or thinks about the reasons why certain things are happening and why certain things are not happening. And we see the world in that kind of a prism. In uh, as I said, in many of those in, in internal conflict kind of situations, we uh, uh, see where where the protagonist is going through that kind of a conflict because his belief is what uh, should not be or it, it is not true. and he he or she emerges out of that kind of a belief so everybody has his, his or her own way of seeing the world because the world revolves around that particular person he or she has a very different spotlight or he has a he or she has a very different projection of the world based on his or her own experience so important for for storytellers to know that and important for us to know that that uh, when we talk about these stories uh, we look for a particular world view so it could be you know related to the encoding decoding kind of a thing that we say so often times when somebody is shown uh, as a villain maybe that by the storyteller people would at times even identify uh, uh, with the villain because the villain uh, or the so called villain in the story is something that we identify in real life or we consider him or uh, her to be our identity so it's important that you know everybody does not uh, look at the same problem or the same situation or the same goals in the same manner and very importantly we do not think in the abstract abstract means vague we think in specific images whether it is our dreams whether it is it is a vision whether we are imagining something whether we are realizing something whether we are explaining something we think in specific images and that is why good stories are the one which can create those images in your mind they do not talk in uh, vagueness they don't talk in abstract and that's why you know uh, creating that imagery or creating that imagination is so very important for storytelling and that is why podcasting and all those things have made their uh, uh, return as so as to say and radio is becoming so very important because it helps us to think radio helps us to paint those pictures and it's important that when we can imagine things uh, that's where uh, we are impacted more and again uh, uh, brain is stubbornly resistant to change and we know it through the cognitive biases we know it through cognitive dissonance we know it through confirmation bias most often we uh, only want to read or listen things that we agree with if if it is uh, if it is uh, something that we do not agree with then there is a, a cognitive dissonance so if we have to agree with something very differently we have to start off with the, from from a common kind of a platform and then to uh, extend from that so important to realize that all of us are have our own belief systems or have our own likes and dislikes and it is resistant to uh, change so uh, we expect uh, 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 that kind of uh, 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 as we say um, uh, uniformity or or we ex expect uh, some some kind of uh, uh, regularity in in a uh, uh, lot of events in the world so from very birth and this is what that i've already already said when i spoke of uh, the conspiracy theories and all that our primary goal of the brain the left side of the brain basically is to make those causal connections if this then that okay he said that then is this could mean that or she said that it could mean that or oh, she gestured like that it could mean that oh he's or she's talk or or this is happening or he's going or the or, or, or the channel is changing or whatever so we create those causal connections so those cause effect connections should be known it should not be just flying away in, in all, all all directions uh 
because we store these things in the subconscious mind and it, it it is a kind of a simulation and i'm sure we understand the meaning of simulations where where we actually uh, we might not uh, ever uh, you know uh, try and go up the everest or whatever but those are the things that we notice and the brain the implicit part of the brain not the explicit part of the brain the subconscious brain stores these things that whenever in 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 future we find out something like that we might uh, use uh, uh, those uh, examples in the future as well so uh, the brain abhors randomness if something is random the brain would abhor that it would not like uh, uh, all those uh, meaningless patterns and if there if the patterns don't even exist the brain will create those patterns and that's very important to understand that even in uh, times when we hear we, when we see those uh, you know patterns on mars or whatever people will maybe even start looking like uh, at them as if you know it it means something so we are creating we are drawing patterns even if they are not exist because it uh, anticipates or it helps us to anticipate what might happen next so uh, uh, we are converting uh, our, our whatever data whatever information comes to us in in these meaningful patterns so even when we are reading stories or when we are inside a story we are looking at uh, these kind of uh, patterns or what what might happen next uh often uh, brain will summon the past memories to evaluate what is happening so a lot of uh, the things that when we want to make sense of something which is happening we go back and find out uh, uh, you know what it was like in the past so a lot of our things are based on uh, our own uh, experiences so you we draw from our own experiences to uh, 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 you know um, uh, make sense of what is happening now so whatever we are we are seeing at at, at the moment is re related to what uh, uh, uh what has happened to us so it, it's uh, important to you know draw back or to go back to what has uh, happened so that that again you know links to the cause effect relation that i was talking about uh it takes long term conscious effort to hone a skill before the brain assigns it to cognitive unconscious as i said that it is there in the unconscious uh, uh, mind but it will take a long term conscious effort so it's something that we hear or a story which we uh, hear for the first time it will not go into the cognate or the unconscious or the subconscious mind immediately there is a long term effort or when you are involved in the story or when it has all the elements that i spoke of if all those elements are there then only i will uh, be attracted to the story and then only it will uh, be in my cognitive unconscious or the subconscious uh, i'm not going to talk about uh, these things because i think we've already spoken a lot about uh, um, you know storytelling and all these are some of these story uh, types that we use uh, when we want to uh, persuade people to uh, accept our point of view or you know even in presentations these are the uh, six different kinds of stories which are being told it could be who i am and you know um, talking about uh, your your or, or establishing your own credibility then why am i here what i'm trying to do or what is the kind of vision i have for everybody or for the team so on and so forth and uh, you know having teaching stories stories which have some message there or uh, Story or stories which uh, tells us about some values which are which are uh, uh, you know present there, and a kind of thing that I know what you are thinking kind of stories. So many 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 kinds of stories. I have tried to uh, uh, summarize just uh, the the most important uh, basics of uh, uh, storytelling. So I am sure that uh, it, it makes some uh, uh, sense to all of you. Uh, as I said, uh, these uh, things will be. Uh, Uh, available to uh, most of you after this uh, uh, presentation so uh, that's all from my presentation so i think we end the presentation here